this evening we're going to take a closer look at this concept of social lending. This thing called peer-to-peer -peer lending. I'm joined, joined by Sean Emery, who's the CEO of Rainfin in the studio with me. Hi Sean, nice to have you with us. Um, I, was, I was told, I've always been told, never lend money to family or friends. So why the hell would I even think of going and lending it to somebody I don't even know? I mean, those are perfect questions. I think the fundamental thing of why someone says don't lend to family and friends is because there's potential to damage a relationship. Yeah. People understand that it is obviously one of the easiest ways to lend. I mean, we often all want to lend to friends and family. We feel that we can help them out and we can earn a good return. But what's missing is what happens if things go wrong? Mm -hmm. We still need to be able to you know, contract with each other. And this is why Rainfin and peer-to-peer -peer lending exists. It's really an intermediary which comes in between two people who want to lend to each other. And it ensures that that relationship between the two is both commercial, it's contractual, it's fair to both parties. And if the relationship changes, the still the contracts don't change and it still implements them and ex executes them. So you guys are the, the intermediary between mm. this. Well, so, so do you go out and find people who want to loan money mm. and then find people who have got money that they want to invest? Very simply. I mean, that's how banking started. I mean, if we look back to the... To really the, the cooperatives of the past, where you had banks where just people want to lend to each other mm -hmm. in building society context to help people build homes. And banks said, well, we need to sit in the middle between these two parties, A, to regulate the transactions, but B, also to provide a whole lot of risk potential, a whole lot of scale to the system. So that's exactly what we do. We take people who need money, and we take people who want to lend money, and we want to put these two people together. What's important for us it's clear not to put them together in a one-to-one -one relationship because that sometimes has the issue that you deal with from a risk yeah. point of view. Yeah. The idea is to take a lot of people on the one hand and a lot of people on the other and allow them to lend to each other through a group environment. This group environment clearly diminishes the risk, diminishes the returns, and allow people to achieve the objectives that they want to achieve. Where, where, how, how long have you guys been going? The, the concept of peer-to-peer -peer lending is not new globally, but in South Africa we've only been here for three weeks. We've just recently launched. Oh, jeepers. Yeah, we were, uh, so it's that, that young? Yeah, I mean, we're on the cutting edge. I mean, it's, a, it's interesting to see why South Africa hasn't launched yet. And it's interesting. I mean, we started looking at this in 2008 already from a global perspective. And globally, peer-to-peer -peer lending is exploding. If we look at it in, in the U.S. and in China and the U.K., over billions of dollars are being spent or being lent across these marketplaces. So why not South Africa? And when we came to South Africa and tried to start, South Africa has its own uniquenesses. We have very strong banks, we have very strong regulations, mm. we have foreign exchange control, we have a lot of uh, internet-based regulation from a contract signing which we had to adhere to. We have FICA now, we have RICA. So the systems need to be quite significantly modified to work in this country and we've obviously done that modification now. But you say that this is a, a burgeoning sector overseas. Mm. I mean, what? just give me an Why? example, what sort of value how much are we looking at? Well, the largest one in the moment in the U.S. is a company called The Lending Club. Yeah. And The Lending Club last month lent over $50 million in one month. So they, their average turnover now is about $300 million that they'll be able to do a quarter. They're hoping to get $1.2 billion this year of loans. It's just one of the players. Okay. And there's about 19 that are in the U.S. So as a sector, it's well over $2 billion now from a U.S.-based. China, it's significantly larger, and as well as the U.K. So there is, there is a bit of history here that you can mm. pick up and 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 use and uh, utilize in this in this market that's very important for us i think you know sometimes it's always good to be first to do something new in the internet but this is one of those cases where it's good to be first in a country but not necessarily first in the world because we could go overseas and look at the lessons and look at how things went wrong in this space before so we have been able to get a lot of knowledge and a lot of experience and and see exactly what we needed to do when we came here so the couple of rules we learned clearly you know, the marketplaces, we have to, as the marketplace, as Rainfin, we can't let people just lend to each other without providing any oversight and regulation. So what we do is everybody who comes onto our platform and says we need money, we do a full verification, credit check. We ensure that those people meet the standards that you as a lender might want. So if you come in, you as an individual, as a lender, you want to come into the marketplace and you want to say, well, I've got some money. I would like to do two things. I'd like to earn a higher return than I can potentially on a fixed deposit or on a bond or on one of those platforms. But I'd also like to help somebody else. 
And those are two things which are really taking place. People are losing a bit of confidence in the banking sector. They're wanting to put their money somewhere where they have a greater margin of return. And the other is they also want to do something good with their money in the same context. So if they can achieve both of those, then the lending platforms are perfect for them. So we then ensure that if someone comes to market and says, look, I really want to be quite conservative. I only want to have about 7 or 8% return on my money. Therefore, I want to lend to people who are really triple A credit worthy, someone who scores above 640, someone who's employed, someone who's got a full-time income, the normal criteria that a bank would use in order to write out a home loan or a personal loan. Mm -hmm. So we ensure that the customers on the system, when they go through the marketplace, all meet those criteria, and then we match you with that criteria. We say, look, these guys, this bundle of people, this thousand guys, match your criteria. And we suggest then, Jeremy, you give of your thousand rand, give 10 rand to each person or one rand to each person. Mm -hmm. uh, you agree what sort of rate is good for you. They agree, you, you guys have a discuss, um, auction, really. That's how the marketplace works, to get a rate that you agree on. And then someone else might come to the marketplace and say, look, I'd like to invest into entrepreneurs or to, or to people who are just starting out. And they don't have all of the criteria that are required in that triple A category. But then perhaps you're saying, well, I'm prepared to lend them, but I want maybe 12% for money, 12 or 13% on the money, because there might be a higher default, because it is a slightly riskier category. And we then group those people in a bucket for you, and then we say, this is this bucket, and you then choose your allocation, and you allocate spending towards those. And that's how the marketplace works. What, what sort of investment are you... Let's, let's look at, the, mm. let's look at the, the lender's side first here. Mm. Um, what sort of investment are you looking at there? Is, there, is, is it like almost like a unit trust where you're putting in a thousand rand a month or, or is it a yeah. lump sum that you, you put, put into the Well, investment? people use it in different ways. I think what's important to use in our marketplace is that when you invest, when you, when you lend into the marketplace as a lender, what's, what's sometimes very interesting is that you start getting your repayments on a monthly basis from the marketplace. So you've got to use then the money that's been repaid from someone and then you get to reinvest it as well. So unlike a unit trust where you put it and it comes back, I mean, only in three years or five years' time. What actually happens in this is quite liquid. The loans are three to five months or to six months long. So you put your money in and then your money gets back out into your account. You can set up an auto bid, which just bids on your behalf and goes in. But really something which is on a short-term basis. And you do it normally on a regular basis in, in terms of injecting money into it. There are some regulations in South Africa. So in a South African context, we ensure that an, an individual needs to lend between either 100 loans or 500,000 rand if he goes over those limits as an individual, we need to register them with a national credit regulator because they then become a lender in their own right, a money lender in their own right. Okay. So we try to ensure that people, we don't see individuals of lending more than 500,000 unless those individuals are already registered with national credit regulator and they just want to use our platform as a way to get to a different group of borrowers. So they then come on, they say they're regulated, and then they can lend to the ceilings of the limit, really, for them to use the platform. And that's, I guess, the two trends that have taken place internationally. So what happens is people start with small amounts of money. And they start saying, look, I want to help people out as opposed to really using it as an investment class. And then they see that they get relatively good returns in the U.S. and everywhere else in the world. Then they say, well, now looks, this looks more interesting, so perhaps I should invest a lot more into it. And when they invest more into it, then you get a, a pattern that builds up, and we have a whole lot of data. When we have a whole lot of data that builds up, then you have the asset managers who are sitting and saying, well, I actually have to manage a whole lot of money for a lot of people. And one of the places I used to do was buy fixed deposits, which are now only going to yield 4.5%. But if I can invest, just like a bank does, in essence, if I can take some money and put it into this high triple A category of borrower, and I can get 8 or 9%, then I can double the return that I have. So it's all about managing the risk and managing the reward. Just like any investment, you're going to buy into or lend to people who match your risk profile and who you and what you want to invest in. The, it's, it's all sounding very rosy. Mm -hmm. um, there must be downsides here um, because when, when I got the research through mm. uh, on this particular show, um, there was one company, and I can't remember the name offhand, um, I think it was in the UK, yes. that's already gone belly up yes. in this. Yes, it went up six months ago. So there's two reasons that there's two different types of lending. And this is very interesting. This is why when I came back to this point about being able to be first in South Africa, but not first in the end of the world, we went in to see why these guys went under. The particular case you're referencing, their model was quite simple. They said anybody who can use our platform and we will not regulate who comes on the platform. So borrowers then came on, said they were nice and rosy, said they had big incomes, said they had uh, how much they wanted to borrow, said they'd pay back 30%. Investors then bought into them, and they never repaid. 
So then the ones that have been the most successful, like the Lending Club, have provided a degree of service and regulation to the marketplace, and they have assessed all the, borrow all the borrowers that come into the market. I think that's the fundamental difference. It's okay. not social it's as, in the in, regulation. as in the community takes care of itself, because people come on and borrow and they lie about who they are, because they need a whole lot of money, and they haven't repaid, and people then get caught in that. Tra you can't believe everything you see on the internet. So although it is social lending, and although it is peer-to-peer -peer lending, there still is Rainfin providing a service of saying, well, you can, if you want to, use the platform in a complete friend to friend. If you know someone who needs money and you want to lend to them, and all you want in that process is just someone to regulate it in terms of contractual and taking debit orders and collecting the monies from them, then you can use our service just on that level without us doing any credit checking or verification of either of you. That's fine. You can, some people want to use that. But on the other hand, if you say, well, I want to lend to a stranger, we feel it's necessary for us and have been the models that have been successful that we provide that degree of oversight to the market. I think, you know, it's very interesting in this friends and family space. I know you say that in the, when you started the interview off, you say, why could it be such a bad idea? But if you look at the savings that people can have, when you've got people that are over 55, that have got money that they're investing into fixed deposits or bonds and the yields that they're returning, and you've got their own children or family members or cousins that are having student loans or car loans or house mm -hmm. loans, mm -hmm. credit cards, and they're paying huge amounts of interest on those. So we really thought our main mission was to reduce the cost of credit of South Africans. Now, how could we do that? We have to do something different. We have to introduce a middle, because we can say a middleman, but an intermediary that is much more efficient than the banks. If a bank takes 4.75 on a fixed deposit for five years and lends it out at prime plus three, why are they making this big margin in the middle? And the issue is they've got a big cost infrastructure, they provide a lot of oversight, I mean, they do provide a huge amount of service. But if we can help the banks potentially, if we can also help the market being able to do the same principle, find each other and lend each other, but with a much lower cost infrastructure over the web, and we pass that benefit on to both of those people, then there's one way of us reducing the credit profile. Okay, we'll get on to the banks and also the borrowers in just a moment. We're sporking. We're sporking. Uh, talking and speaking with uh, Sean Emery from Rainfin. Don't go anywhere. We'll be back in just a moment.